Hello and welcome back to the channel. And I had so much fun playing Spires and last time. We're going to the second game, Spires and Hildegard, where we follow the adventures of one young girl named, as you may guess, Hildegard. Uh, the gameplay is generally the same as Spires and we're just going to go through this deck. There are 400 cards in this deck. We are not getting through this entire thing. Anyway... We're going to go through the deck from the top to the bottom, drawing cards as we do. The combat is a little different in this one. I will explain it as we go. However, uh, let's just get started, shall we? Uh, reveal one of the three starting cards. Does this work? It did. We only reveal one. Da -da -da. For the Baroness, you wake up to the promise of adventure. A small package has been dropped at your doorstep. Your first delivery. It's a hastily wrapped box of instructions. It's to be delivered in pristine condition to the Baroness of Seacrest Cliffs. Uh, gain three gold. I'm going to assume these are gold. Um, two feats of markmanship. I believe these are feats of markmanship. And pull of course 88, 89, and 90. Okay, so... 88, which is, oh, there's me, Hildegard. Inventory, below. Got it. I believe, yeah, I think these are the marks for the marks of workmanship. So we have two, up to six, and we can spend them to do the things listed on the screen right now. So that is 88, 89, that is not 89, which is... Our slingshot. Uh, this slingshot is your most treasured possession, core from the heart of a thousand-year-old pine. With this slingshot, you can re-roll. You can roll the black wild shot at the end of a set. Place it in your inventory. This is the black wild shot. More on that in like five seconds. Ninety, which is a mysterious package. You pick up the package and turn it over. It's wrapped in paper with some light markings here and there. You don't recognize him as much as you would like to give it a shake. You don't. Well, not yet. Wonder if you will ever know its contents. For now, it will remain a mystery. Place your inventory, mysterious package. I guess I must have picked something different. Because I looked at this a little bit beforehand, and the first thing I did was a combat encounter against a squirrel. But, okay. Do we look for mercantile, or do we go for breakfast? Let's get some breakfast. I'm hungry. Before embarking into the wild, you decide a hearty breakfast at the Hungry Hog is in order. You haven't eaten since yesterday, and your stomach is growling. Uh, Pharaoh fell. The barkeep asks that you want dry fruit and nuts, porridge and coffee, bread and milk. I do like bread and milk. So we're going to go with five. Da -da -da. Breakfast has left you feeling ill. You step out back for some fresh air. The sudden burst... Of sunlight makes you woozy. Whoa, the black wild shot die, which again is this thing. We blank. You puckle over sick and purge your breakfast. Yeah. You see Hannah, the owner of the hungry org, struggling with a large wiggling burlap sack. Do I ask her what's in the bag or do I walk off bread? I'm I just threw up. I think I'm going to go take a walk for a bit. 16. Clear my mind. As you make your way to the outskirts of town, you find Bortle, a pathetic fellow, weeping on a lonely street corner. I don't suppose you're a good shot with that slingshot, he asked. Soldiers are shrugged. Um, we'll find out. You're hesitant. There's something off with this guy, but the curiosity is killing you. You darn tootin' the best, or I'm sorry, it's just for, it is not just for looks, okay? We're the rudest, tootinest player in this entire place. 23, let's go. Sweet Laura, why do you ask, you reply reluctantly. I was about to give my sweet Laura a ring. We're destined to be married, but a pesky jackalope took it. They're attracted to this sort of thing. I had dropped it, and, well, look. He points over in the bushes. Sure enough, there's a jackalope with a ring hanging out of its mouth. You rarely see jackalopes. There are not many in the area, cute little guys. I will reward you handsomely. Why is a jackalope eating a ring? Like, they don't normally eat just rings. Anyway, I can take care of it or it's bad luck to shoot a jackalope. Anyway. 
And let's let's start on our side quest, sir, shall we? Twenty four. I will take care of it. Aha. Uh -huh. So this tells us how many things we have to hit. We're gonna roll some die accuracy two. This means we roll two dies. Sets we can only roll them once. Um, these are the things we can use to make a bullseye. If we get this and this, it's a bullseye because as you can see, it looks like that. We can use these combinations. If we get two, we get a special mark. That's what this indicates. What we do is we roll both of the dice. We roll all the dice we can, which is determined by our accuracy. Our accuracy is two, we roll two. Da -da -da. Now that's a bullseye. So we are going to hold that because that's, uh, you have to hold at least one dice if it were, we're going to keep this, but if it were like, if we're like this and this, I'd be like, oh, this is almost a bullseye. So we're going to pick this one. You have to hold one for release every shot and then you reroll this one. And then once you're done rerolling all the dice you can and you stop, then you roll your die, your wild shot dice. And then you add everything up. And if you get this, you get the reward. If you get all this, you get this reward as well. And depending on whether or not you hit or miss, you resolve that. So, I hope that made sense. Let us roll our wild shot dice and see what we get. Another bullseye! So we get to, we actually get the thing. So we get another marksman token. Dink, we get one gold. Dink, because that's the reward for hitting. Oh, I forgot to read the flavor text. The jackalope sees you, the ring twinkling in its mouth. It looks like it's about to door away. Like a seed hunter, you line up the shot and take a breath and boom, sniped it. So it was a hit. Then we go to court 30. The jackalope drops the ring and scampers off. The man stumbles to fetch it. Oh, thank you. How can I ever repay you for such bravery? You consider this trying not to laugh what a sad and pathetic fellow. <laughs> you don't have to insult the guy. He, he apparently has a wife or something. Shit. I can ask for directions or ask for money. Uh, I'm a girl, so girls like money, so we're going to ask for that. <laughs> yes, of course. The man searches through his various pockets. A moment passes. He looks at you hesitantly. Did you say you want a journey? Not sure I did, but yes, you shrug. Excellent. I have just the thing. Follow me. I'll see what he's got. 37. Is it something cool? Four legs in a bucket. You follow the man to a worn-down stable a few turns off Main Street. I present to you Mildred the Mule. He announces arm rays. You're looking at a small, malnourished mule, its head in a bucket surrounded by a cloud of flies. You're excited? Here's that for a ward. Who needs gold when you can have her? He beams. You aren't that excited, but Mildred could be a big help. I could get Mildred for 39 or demand gold instead. Uh, I'll, I'll take the donkey. 39. Not 393, damn. Hey, clip clop. You and your noble steed stride down the busy street, sidetracked by thoughts of your future adventures. You steer yourself into a small group of townsfolk. A hot tempered man gets to his feet and unsheaths a dagger. He leaps towards you, getting a hand on your bag. You try and shake him off, but his grip holds fast. Suddenly, a hooded figure emerges from behind and tackles your assailant. Free, you gallop off and glance back as the hooded figure watches you go. Roll any wild shot die. If it's a bullseye, pull cord 63. Uh, there are different ones. I think, yeah, the blue one is supposed to be the best. Oh, yeah, that's like a 30%. To get a wild shot. So we're going to do this one. Let's roll it. Let's see if we can get a wild shot. A uh, bullseye. Nope. So time to leave town. Let's get the hell out of here. 52. Oh, hello. Chapter 1, Grey Oaks. Good fortune. As you cross Main Street and head west, you hear someone calling your name. 
Hildegard, it's all around town that you're carrying something of interest. I just picked this thing up. You don't gossip too much. You need to keep your eyes open and watch your back. It's about time you had a reading, suggests Marin, the renowned local fortune teller. Staying in the dark doorway of her gypsy cottage, she urged you forward with a wave. <laughs> Please don't curse me. As long as it's free or I want nothing. As long as it's free is fine. Let's do something. Let's get let's see what the future has in store for me, Matade. Freebies. Everything has a price. Your gold. Give it here. Come here. Give her all your gold. <sighs> I just said only if it were free. You take a seat across from her. The room is dark and filled with smoke. Shrunken heads and cracked skulls hang from the ceiling. Now hand over the packet, she says bluntly, tapping her nails on the table between you. I thought I was here for my fortune, you ask, questioning why you ever stepped into this creepy place. Uh, let's go to 55. When can I leave? Am I going to have to shoot her with my slingshot? Marin raises her hands and the dull yellow crystal on the table begins to levitate. Marin's body splits into three astral projections. Pull sh and shuffle course 56. There are three. Place all three face up and around. Oh, Lord. Shit's going down. 56. Shuffle. Get these out the way. All face up in a row. Okay. All three cards is treated as separate targets. You may attack them in any order you choose. Roll shot dice normally on all three targets. If one is defeated, flip that card over and look for a dot in the bottom right corner. If there is, it's the real Marin. If not, it's an illusion. The encounter ends after finding the real Marin by seeing the dot or failing to find her after shooting on at all three targets. Note, only one player may roll in each Marin's card after it's Test is complete. Continue below. So, each one has an accuracy of four. So we're going to roll four dice. Each one we need three bullseyes, which is very hard. And each one we get two sets. A set basically means if we roll these and do our thing, and, they, uh, and say we get, oh, we get uh, two bullseyes. Then we redo the entire thing with draw, rolling four new dice. So, uh, I mean, let's just go left to right. So, do a roll for real this time. That is a bullseye. So we're gonna hold those and reroll. Yeah, we can. I can still use those. These show you which one symbols you can use for a bullseye and whatnot. Um, do I want to try to get it off of this? Or do I just want to try... I guess it makes... Let's, let's double roll. Let's double roll. We, we already saved two. We can double roll. That's a blank. We'll save that. And last one. Oh! Two bullseyes. Very nice. Now we want our wild shot die. Nothing, but we do get two hits. We'll use that to signify hits. And we re-roll again. This, so that was set one with two hits. Just need one more, whoa. One more for this one. Should be easy with four dice. I got it. And I don't, I'm just gonna do the whole thing because we had, this thing can make us lose one, like this symbol, but we could just give away one of these, so it doesn't really matter. And it, uh, there's no bonus, <laughs> it just happened. So, let us see if we got the real Marin. I don't see a dot in the bottom. Is that a dot? The scans aren't the most high quality. We're gonna keep going if we fail. Uh, we're gonna just see. So, let's go. This one, accuracy four, set two. <laughs> that was a good one. That almost, uh, we'll hold off on this one and look here. We got that one. That's one bullseye. We'll redraw both of them because, I mean, we can, why not? We'll hold off on this one. Lash roll. Nothing. 
and a wild shot blank. So that was one set and we only did one point of damage. Do it again. A, that's another one. Do I just hold off on the third? Or do I keep, I will do it. Roll both. That's two hits. As long as I don't get the thing that makes me destroy it. Hey, look at that. That's a lot of hits. Let's go. And let's see if this one has a dot on it. That appears to be no dot. And because it's the last one, I'm just going to reveal this if there's no... Yeah, that's definitely the dot. Okay, so we did hit the dot. Okay, so we're going to reveal one of the 257s. Got it first try, too. And we get encouragement. The illusions of Marin fade away, leaving her seated across the table. Very good. Your heart is strong. Let that and your strength guide you forward. I am confident you're the right person for this task. She says with finality, I want you to have this. Pull cord 87. Mark of the Grizzly. You can't say for sure, but you feel stronger. In some instances, going forward, you may be able to use the Mark of the Grizzly ability. Place in your inventory. Okay. We have a growing inventory. Oh, Lord, that did not... What is this card with the bear, you ask? Just a bit of encouragement, a reminder of the strength you have inside. Now listen, my sight of the days to come is limited, but I do sense some things. Trust only those who have earned it. Don't be fooled. If I can aid you more in the coming days, I'll find a way. Good luck. Pull cord 83. Thank you for all the help, crazy lady. Former Falstaff. What? This does not seem like the thing. Okay, whatever. While going over Marin's cryptic words, you wander through the farmer's market. Falstaff, a local pig farmer, catches your attention. Hildegard, have a moment. I know you are headed to Crow's Falls. I have something I need you to do. Why does everyone know where I'm going? Here's five gold. Give this to Gilfie. He knows what I want. He stands, is near Crow's Falls, Town Squares. I trust you to do this. Gain five gold. We're rich again. Uh, place this conversation inventory. Return to the previous story card. I'll just put you over here because we are quickly in our room. Uh, head to the edge of town. 59. Rations. It's setting in. You're about to leave the Great Oaks. Maybe one final stop to visit the Merc Pool Course 93, 94, 95. Unless already purchased, which I did not. So... 93, 94, 95. Let's see what they have. Enchanted Boda Bag. Mensa the Great Oaks, best leather worker, has been crafting these for 50 years. Water in place inside will remain cool and fresh. This one looks like it's seen some action. Grappling hook. The rope has a sharp set of barbs on the end to climb up and down when hooked. Handy indeed. Or chestnut popper. Brisket, the store owner, beams as you look over a nondescript chestnut on the leaf. What's this, you ask? A chestnut popper. Handed over to me by a mistake during um, a trade. You'd best not know the details if you can be, it can be used to, used to what? I am one shy from being able to buy everything, which means like the chestnut popper should be the one to go. However, and the graphing hook, those seem the most useful. This will get discarded. You're approached by a shriveled up woman who looks like a date left to dry in the sun. You there, you a fisherman, she asks. On occasion, you say, caught off guard. Well then, I know a place you can catch something for the both of us. A little fishy might not be a bad idea. Sure, show me this place. We'll go to 60. I need some fish, maybe some salmon, some catfish. You've got the touch. The partially mummified woman leads you across Edgewater Bridge. 
I've tried here. Nothing bites you've grown. I need someone with a strong arm and the right touch. Cast all the way out to those cattails. I can't reach them by myself. She hands you a fishing pole. The lure's an odd black stone. It's heavy. Here goes nothing. 61. We need five. Well, accuracy four of four sets. Okay. Oh, but we can't use the white half bullseye. You f take the bean up fishing rod and give it a shake. It feels good enough, solid and balanced. You give it a try. Let's go. So, four for four. Wendy's four for four. Okay, we have one bullseye. Do I save this and I've I've been re-rolling both both times, so we're just gonna keep going. Reroll both of these. Um this will make a half. And we roll this. Oh, it's a miss. What's the wild shot do? That looked like it was gonna do it. That's one with one thing down. And we're going to do this three more times. We did get a bullseye. Let's change it up a bit, huh? We're going to use this one and hope we, hope we get that. Although, what's statistically better? Whatever. We're going to, we're going to keep doing it the way I've been doing it. And it works. Let's see what we get here. I thought it was going to hit again. Okay. However, we do get two more hits for our second set. And let's keep going. That was a horrible roll. Uh, we have to save at least one if we want to re-roll. So we're going to save the one that actually does something, potentially. It did something. Let's go. These two don't even make a pair, so we're going to keep rolling, rolling. Another blank. We are doing not that good with this set. And, I mean, it's still one. Unless... Every time it gets so close. However, that is one. We're up to four. We need one more bullseye for this, the final set. Preferably two if I want to mark... Although I have these marksman things. Make a reroll, maybe roll a wild shot. Add one dice, one shot dice in the next set. Add a bullseye on target face off. Add one additional set on the target. Retry a target. Um, if I get two, it would basically pay for itself. Because I don't think I'm getting two. Yeah, we're going to hone and add one shot to our set. Let's go. This should hopefully pay for itself. At the very least, that paid for itself. Roll all three. Ah, that was a terrible. Roll these two. This is completely... They're both completely... Oh, if I get another one of these, it's a bullseye. So let's see what I get. Circle. That's two bullseyes, which makes it six. So I did, and even if I get the blank, yeah. Uh, that is six, so we get our token back. Would not have gone, I don't think we would have gone there without it. And we did catch it, so it is 62. You're welcome, lady. I better be able to get some food from this. The lure plops down into the water near the cattails. You feel a tug in the line pulls. You have it. Reel it in, she says excitedly. It doesn't feel like anything alive, more like a lost boot or a tree branch. You reel in an old tin. Give it here, the woman snatches and pries it open. She dumps a handful of gold coins on the ground and begins counting. Yes, it's all there, she pulls off the fishing rod. This is yours for one gold if you want it. If you pay one gold, place the magnet lure in your inventory. I don't have a gold. Um, 
I'd like to catch an actual fish. 63. I am kind of hungry. You head down to the tackle shop to buy... I don't have any money. You'll need it to fish. Too low keeps the spare fishing rod for you behind the counter. Horse fly... I do have... I am poor, so I do have at least that. So one horse fly. Buy your bait up to three. Take a cube of the associated color, red, black, or gold. If you're broke, horse flies are free. And they only have the one in stock, so I can't buy any more. Place the fishing rod in inventory. 64. Pull the fishing cords, 91, shuffle and place them face down like so. Place one or more of your bait cubes on the fishing spot cords you would like to cast on. All bait purses must be used. Roll as you would during an encounter and attempt to meet the conditions indicated on the fishing spots. If those conditions are met, you've got a bite. Turn off the cord. If the bait you've used is listed, you have successfully caught a fish. Okay, so 91. How many of these are there? Three. Okay, roll as if it's an encounter. Uh, we're going to put our bait on. I mean, they're, they're all the same. Right here. Accuracy four. Only one set. Let's see if we can get a bullseye. This is the only one we can use. This is the only one we can use. Okay. Can we get a kit? Not looking good. We did not get a hit. Oh, wait. We still got the roll as you would during an encounter, which means you get a wild shot. Which is nothing. Okay. You did not get any fish. I guess we lose the bait. We'll put you over here for now. What? There you go. Fish, then leave the gray oaks. 66. Crossroads. The roads ahead fork into two. An old sign marks Hickory Hill to the right and Pointy Peaks to the left. Both will eventually lead you to Crow Falls and from there to the coast, but you're not sure which to take. A crow lands on the right side of the sign. Maybe the crow knows the way. But then another lands on the left, then another. They start to call at you and ruffle their feathers furiously. These birds look angry. One of them leaps in the air in your direction. The crows attack. 67 and 68. Ooh. Oh, this is a combat encounter. God damn. Okay, so... Win 73, lose 6. I'm very tempted to lose. We need 7 accuracy to beat these things. So, how do these things work again? Okay. Face-offs. When this occurs... Hit meter card will be revealed along with the enemy card or cards. You approach these enemy cards the same way as the target, with a few exceptions. There are no set limits, and blocking is now in play. Blocking is detailed on the next page. Uh huh. Hildegard's turn flow. Roll and finesse, shite dos. Roll one. Yeah, oh, finesse is when you save it. Roll one wild shot. Decide how to use the result. Blocks, bullseyes, etc. Once Hilder set is. Hildegard set is complete. Roll for the enemy. Is it just one for one? It looks like it's one for one. They roll. They finesse. Any roll results that can't fill or potentially fill a hit square. Okay. So what's blocking now? Blocking is a great way to defend yourself during a face-off after Hildegard's shot dice are locked. If any of your results match a bullseye port on an eligible color hit square, you may use that shot dice to block. You cannot block gray hit squares. You cannot block a color hit square unless the previous square is filled with either a hit or a block.
So in this place, I can't do nothing. Once you've committed to using a shot plus. Okay. I think I know how this works. So it starts with me. I have accuracy four, so I roll four. Uh, what can I use to basically everything? So this and this is just a bullseye. Seems good. Uh, this is, let's do that, I guess. Yeah, because that has two faces that can make it go. I'm like that. Wild shot. Nothing. So it gets one hit. I can't. Apparently, I can only block here and here, the top things. And since the gray port has not been filled, I cannot block there. What does tame mean? Yeah, it looks like I can only block on the on this hit and this hit, which is slightly annoying. I don't know what tame means though. There it is, tame. No wild shots on the next set. Okay, so if they get me hit there, they do that. Okay, well, their turn now. They only roll three. And that's what their hit accuracy is. They did score a hit. But next, I need a black one. They, they hit again. It would have been nice if I could block that, but that's what the game for you. Okay, so we get... A hit and a hit and we can't use the thing again can I still block this one even though it's I don't think I can anyway we're just gonna keep going rules are a little vague remember no wild shot and I can't block this one which is always fun we get another bulls no I can't use this for this shot so I don't, oh, did I do that for the last one? Anyway, going forward. That. That. Both, none of these will let me get another bullseye on. So it's just one more bullseye. And then it's their turn. Should they have finesse another turn? Okay. Anyway, moving forward. They roll three. They whiff, they're going to save this one because this could potentially get all the way up here. Do it again. They scored a hit. Okay, if they had got another hit. Okay, back to me. I really need to pick up the pace here, darling. Uh, let's do that one. That one. That's two hits. We can do the wild shot this time. Of course I have... Now I get the X. So that only goes down to one hit. Because I have to get rid of one of these things. Wait, when do I shoot... Determine when to block? It's after the wild shot dies. So this one will at least be used as a block. That's good to know. So it needs a... That. But it still needs another one. Which it gets. Are you freaking kidding me? Does that... Does that, and I can't use my wild shot anymore. At least until the next round. Oh, these crows are fucking me up. Use that. <laughs> okay. You know what that means? It means we're going to get the miss again. <sighs> two. We're both at two. So let's see how this turns out. 
Um. None of these can work. So do they just stop? Any role that re that can't fill or potentially fill a hit square this set must be finessed until they can or until the enemy runs out of finesses. But you still have to save one, right? I guess I just save one that's worthless. Okay. They'll save another one that's worthless. Oh, please. A complete whiff. Thank you. Come on, big money. We get a hit. Both of these are worthless. And now I can't get another full bullseye. What do you have? Can I get a bullseye off of this? No. So it's at six, three. Let's see what we get. It saves that. It still has the potential to kill me. It no longer has the potential to kill me this round, at least. It didn't do any damage. Oh, thank you, merciful God. This should, okay. That's that. It, I forgot I still have marksmanship. <laughs> I, uh, it's fine. We didn't even need it. Didn't even need it. Okay, so we get another feat of marksmanship. Up to four. And we did hit. We did succeed. Which means we go to... The hell do we go to? Oh, there it is. Win 73. Never a doubt in my, in my mind. Easiest game of my life. So, pluck luck. Free of the birds at last, you start plucking the pointy black feathers out of your hairs and clothes. For a brief moment, you're able to sit in peace before you hear it. Something or someone is rustling behind you. Do you have the conversation cord 13? Spoke to Oivid about the minister? I don't think so. No. Nope, I don't. So 74 it is. Hurling husk. Rather suddenly, you're hit in the back by something hard and blunt. The blow knocks you over. You turn to see a scarecrow. Not 10 feet away, hurling corn husks at you. This must be an enchantment to ward off those rabbit crows. If all the weather's lying about this one, must be a little... It thinks I'm a rab... A crow. Bullshit shenanigans. 96 and 97. How does it not know the difference between a crow and a girl? The hell is this? Corn of the chaos rules. Look out! The scarecrow is throwing corn missiles. Layout cords 75, 97, and 77. Oh, Lord. Okay. Lay it out like that. Okay. Sets. At the end of each of Hildegard's sets, turn cores 97 counterclockwise. Starts with wild. Count each complete circulation of core 97 with a cube. For each circulation, add plus one to hit. The status effect. Listed will affect Hildegard's set. During your turn, you may opt to use any bullseye combination on the Corn of Chaos. It can be removed after three bullseyes. The face-off ends of Hildegard is defeated. What? It stores... I guess this is what affects us. Oh, these are hits. So if it gets down to here, I just get a hit? That does not seem fun. After three bullseyes. 
Okay, we're just gonna try accuracy four. Let's go. This has seven. This can't use the black. Can I use? The status effect listed will affect Hildegard's set. Does it affect my set or his set? What does wild mean? May reroll one wild shot. Okay, okay. So hit hit on face off Hildegard's mean okay. I see it all now. So because this is wild, uh, I may reroll one wild shot on set. Very good. Uh, I do not like taking hits. But can I use any combination to make a bullseye? Or does it have to be this? Like, can I use the black die for the corn cob? I'm gonna say no. Anyway. Are you freaking kidding me? Well, hold on to that. That gives us one. Roll again. I'm rolling both of them. I wonder which one I'm going to save. Terrible. Okay, we get one of these. And we can re-roll this. Which we will. Terrible. So I get one hit. I'm going to put the hit on the cord cob. And this rotates this way. So next turn I'm going to get a hit. And I can do that. This accuracy is three, just like the birds. Let's go. Um, like, would it save this one? Because it could potentially hit that one. I'm going to say yes. Rules are a little vague. Just don't get the good. Perfect. So this happens on my turn. I get another hit. And I can no longer block that. Perfect. Wow. Okay. Okay, I got one bullseye. I should have saved that one. The, I can't make another one now. Fine. What do I get? Nothing. So we'll put one on here again. This gets turned, and we do this again. Uh, oh, I can't, I can't block this. Right, 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 because, you know, that just makes sense. So that's a hit. Oh, that's a black one, so it needs... We don't have another one. Nope. Okay, that's a miss. Back to my turn. I flub, which means minus one shot dies in the next set. Perfect. Just what I wanted to hear. I guess this one. Terrible. I did get a bullseye, though. And our bonus is nothing. But we are at least going to get rid of this stupid thing. That's the third one. I don't care. And we can use one as a block. So let's do this again. Three. It, it got rid of the block because of course it did. It didn't get rid of the block again. It didn't get rid of the block again. Okay. So, now we're going full in on this thing. Terrible. Also terrible. Are you kidding me? This is nothing. That's a complete whiff. Can I get something on the hit die at least? No. Perfect. Perfect. Exactly what I wanted to say. That's a hit. And we're going to say finesse is that because it can potentially get a hit. Watch this make it. Okay. So one hit. 
Wait, could I have continued to block that? It doesn't say anything about not being able to do it. So I'm going to say, yeah, I can do it. So that would have hit the block. Or actually, nah, I'm just going to keep going. Again, with these horrible rolls. Terrible. Oh, wait, that's a bullseye. Jeez. Reroll this. Fine. Ooh, another bullseye. So that's two bullseyes, and we're putting a block down again. Hey, we finally got damage on the big bad. Let's go. Uh, no, it will save that. No, it will save that. Nope, nothing. And that block stays there. Good, let's do it. I'm feeling slightly more confident. That's a bullseye at least. Not quite two bullseyes unless, no, just one. Now it's this thing's turn. Don't get the black. It got rid of the block. Uh, it'll, I guess it'll hold, I, I don't think it should hold both of them, since if it does, it ends the set, but we'll hold that one. Just don't get a black, please. Thank you. My turn with the four. Why do I always, get, I'm getting the double, the half blacks, which are so annoying. I have got a more bullseye from the half blacks now than ever, and I whiffed. I've got one at least. Thank you for that. Let's roll for you. I could do another block square, which I'm going to need. Uh, it'll hold on to this one because that has potential. It does actually can't do damage, but it has to save at least one. Perfect. this, save that, we'll save that, that's a bullseye at least, and this one is another bullseye, two bullseyes, and we have a block, perfect, so now we just need one more, oh lord, these are tight, uh, it will save that one. It will save, it does not matter. Doesn't matter, okay. Hildegrad's turn again, just need one bullseye. I mean, we're technically halfway there. Not even technically, just halfway there. Got there, done, done, done. Okay, so win 82. You watch in satisfaction as the Scarecrow's pumpkin head bursts in an explosion of orange goop and seeds. Its tattered burlap arms drop lifeless to its sides. The fray has left you covered from head to toe in crow feathers and pumpkin innards, and you didn't pack any extra clothes. It's been a rough morning, but it could have been worse. After wiping yourself down, you notice a note nailed to the Scarecrow's post. If you'd like to read it, pull 84. I would like to read it. Watch it curse me. 84. Vogue's gift. To whoever is lucky enough to read this, it's unfortunate for me but fortunate for you that I stumbled into incurable misfortune. During my pursuits here in the hills, I contracted crow fever. Due to this and my lack of lineage, I leave you my most precious heirloom to you. On the path through the pointy peaks, you'll come across the Oak of Elders. I've hung it there. Please be respectful of the others at rest. A warning. Keep away from the crows. My enchantments haven't worked. They've poisoned and will give you the fever as they did me. It takes hold of your mind and drives you mad. Sincerely, Vogue. I guess we're going through Pointy Peaks then because I want to get my special enchanted gift. So that is 104. 
Chapter 2, Pointy Peaks. Jingle Bells. The trail follows a creep into the mountains. From here, you can see the break line. A fresh coat of snow speckles the Pointy Peaks. It's a magnificent sight. Your heart ringing, a seasoned gentleman with bells tied onto him from head to toe is coming your way. With way too much enthusiasm, he scurries towards your arms raised. Oh my, I've got just the thing for you. Pull cord 196. Then... 196. It seems I've already pulled it. Or it just wasn't in here. That's 96. Anything in here? Huh. That's no good. Is the script broken? That's 231. Yeah, it doesn't have core 196. Unless it was put in wrong. Oh, it's just not put in there. Okay. Got it. Got it. Wild game. While you're out in the wilderness, it pays to keep your eyes open for wild game. Pull and shuffle cords 197. Place them in a separate, stake, separate stack face down. Okay. How many cords am I resolving at the same time? Okay. Place them in a face down stack. This is a wild game deck. Pull a card from this deck whenever you encounter the symbol above. The wild game deck is only using chapter two. Good luck and happy hunting. Okay. I have a touch of leprosy. Be gone. Let me guess. A bell? Let's be sarcastic. 110. Bells and whistles. The man pulls an old bell off his beard, gives it a quick rattle, and handles it to you. This will scare off the local predators. Wear it on your belt, let it do the work. That'll be two gold. Now wait a minute, I have something far better than a lousy bell, says another voice. A woman walks up behind the man. Don't listen to this fool. He's been out in the woods too long. I have a whistle, see? She holds up a small curved bone. Bull this one in danger, sneer. Gold, please. I don't have any gold, so I will have to respectfully decline. Head toward the stream or head up the trail instead. Where is this thing? Uh, on the path through, you come across an oak of elders. Creek or trail? No, stream or trail. They both appear to be the same thing. Whatever. We will go with the stream. One, two, no, we're going to do one, two, three. Follow the trail. It's probably a little bit safer. You reach Peak Falls and come to an impasse. Heavy rainfall has wrecked havoc on the area. A stream that's now a river blocks your path. And the bridge once here has been swept away. Downstream, you see Sora to the structure jutting out the water. You're glad this delivery wasn't assigned to you last week during the storm. There's a wall of walk to your left, a cliff to your right, and the trestles will river in the middle. Um, I have Mildred, but I don't have a cord for her, which makes me think she got away. I do have the grappling hook, and I did pay for it, so let's use that. Did you use the grappling hook? You swing over the river, landing safely on the other side, but you're unable to keep hold of the rope and it swings away. Discord the grappling hook and Mildred the mule if required. Okay, no more grappling hook. Yoink. 
With the river at your back, you continue to climb until your legs give out. Time to rest. To your left is an open meadow edged with wild berry bushes. On the right, there are signs of game. You spot rabbit tracks and scat from something else you can't identify. We'll camp in the glade, 151. Unfamiliar tracks are not very good in the mountain. Thank the berries. A cold breeze pricks at your ears and checks and cheeks as you attempt to start a fire. You rub your hands together, then stoop over and blow on the kindling. A flame leaps and the fire catches hold. The smell of burnt hickory walls up to your nose. There's nothing like the primal comfort of a campfire. As you sit down to get comfortable, a berry bush in front of you shakes and twigs begin to snap. I got neither the bell nor the whistle. So... 154 and 156. Oh my lord. Oh my lord, there's a bear. I am definitely going to have to use some shit for this. Although I have... Redo. Three just lets me redo the entire encounter, I believe. Okay, well, there's no set. They're both at three. What does Graze do? No finesse on the next shot. That's annoying. We're going to try to hit for three. We do not have a whole lot of dice to work with. Only three options. Let's see how this works. I mean, I've been rolling the black half bullseye like crazy last encounter. I'm sure that luck will stay. Right? I mean, kind of. Uh, this will work, maybe. Nope, complete with. Can I get one from the bullseye wild shot? I do get one from the bit wild shot. And now it's your turn. He has, it actually didn't hit. And none of these can save for a finesse, which is very nice. Do that again, please. It did it again. Both of these are worthless. Do it again. A complete whiff by the bear. Let's go. I feel slightly better about my chances now. Uh, that's a bullseye. And I can't get another bullseye for that, so we're just going to hold it. Nope. But we do get a shot off. Do it again. It does get a hit on me. Which is annoying. Again, I think it's going to... Roll any results I can't fill or potentially fill a hit square this set. It can potentially fill a hit square this set, so it's going to hold that one. Doesn't work. Only the one hit. Now it's my turn. Oh, we'll save the only one that's not a blank. Oh, both of those are worthless. The only thing that can save me now? Not that. Can I get one off the wild die? Nope. Your turn. It can potentially use that, so it's going to save that one. It can potentially use that, so it's going to save that one. Please don't get a black die. I am not rolling that rise. Okay, it completely whiffed. So. I'm going to use one of my things, finally, and just add one dice to the next set. See how this works out. That can be useful. We roll these two. Three. That's a full one. I mean, that's potentially one. 
Nope. We get one from that. And we get two. Hits or hits. Now it's the bear's turn. It scores a hit. And it can potentially use this one, so it's going to hold that one. But you can't. Okay, now I at least now I have the chance to block. Which will be very good for some of these dice rolls. Hold on to that. Both of the... Hold on to that. Please. Got that. Roll a hit die. I can't... Yeah, I'm going to forgo the block to deal the damage. It is getting fairly close to dying. Now it's its turn. It will save this one because it's potential. None of these are potential, but it still has to save at least one. Okay. It completely missed. Thankfully, my turn. I guess I'll save that one. I got a bullseye. That's fine because I can't get nothing anyway. Just don't. Okay, that's two hits and I can use that to block. Oh, it has to be a bullseye port. Wait, so let's see if I, I, I did get a chance to reroll this. So let's see if I can get one. No, I don't get the block then. Did I do damage with this? I don't think I rolled the black, the, the hit die. Two, it's dead anyway, perfect. So we get two of our marksmanship tokens. We are doing pretty good at that. We won, we go to 162. The point, wounded, the beast howls and falls back. You race up the steep path to a clearing of a giant oak tree at its center. Confident you're no longer being hunted, you stop to catch your breath. Is this where my treasure is? 162? Put the following 14 cards into three groups numerically. These groups represent three locations of entrance. Reveal a card from any location deck. You can move to a new location anytime or go back and continue from the latest card revealed in any location if that card allows. Once six cards are revealed and completed, you must discard all locations pre to 179. Do not discard unrevealed cards from the location decks until you have revealed six. Oh my lord, that's confusing. So, um, I have to go through six. There is a tree. We were told to look at that tree. So we're going to do the tree. Tree is number one. The shrine. An inscription reads, We leave those we cherish within these branches. May their souls watch over us from atop the peak. Go for a black bag. If you haven't, go for a red bag if you haven't. Go to another location. I don't really want the bags. Do I? I guess I do. Let's go with the red bag. Wait, 173. Am I doing this right? Should I have done 170 first? Yeah. I should have done 170 first. Whoops. I f how do I mess these up? Whatever. Anyway, so 170. The tree. 
At the center of the clearing is a towering oak tree. Its thick, twisted branches adorn the skies in a complex weed that must have taken centuries. From these branches hang hundreds of red and black bags adorned with trinkets, rustling together like wind chimes. You welcome their song in an otherwise cold and silent mountaintop. Let's investigate the tree, 171. New arrivals. As you move closer, you notice two bags front and center, unlike the rest. One black, one red. They're noticeably unweathered with candles affixed and burning. New arrivals. At the base of this uh, thing is a stone shrine. Um, shoot down the black bag or shoot down the red bag. Or look at the shrine. I mean, I did look at the shrine, so I feel like it's kind of cheating not to. So, yeah, we leave these, yada, yada, yada. So, let's shoot down the red bag. 173. It's successful place to red bag in your inventory. You are hesitant to open it just yet. Later. Okay. I have accuracy three. Two sets. I need two bullseyes. Oh, that's terrible. None of these are work for the bullseye. And I can't make a full bullseye now. So might as well go for this one. I got one. That's one hit. Let's do it again. I don't think I'm going to get that lucky again. I mean, I got a third of it. Nope. So unless this is a bullseye again, I do not. So that was for... Let's let's forget some air basket or the remains. Let's look at the remains. Strewn across the ground is a port skeleton portly covered in snow. Clutched in its hands a small black leather bag. Let's investigate the bag. 166. You pry the bag out of its brittle bone fingers as it snaps free. A cloud of gray dust bursts out and quickly dissipates. There's nothing inside. Well, that was number six. 179. Do not discord unrevealed cords. Okay. The avalanche. Your investigation is interrupted by a low rumble from above. You gasp in disbelief. Racing down the mountainside is a massive avalanche of snow, timber, and rock. You're forced to the cliff's edge near the human-sized basket dangling on the precipice. In the basket, there's nothing but a simple, single wooden peg with a handle. You leap in and pull the peg. Did you monkey around with the plank lever? I touched nothing. 181. Whoa. The flight north. You grab a hold as the basket drops down. The winds thrust you into a violent spin. Then the umbrella portion of the device flings open with a firm snap. To your amazement, the device stabilizes and smooths out. You sail north through the night sky, past most of Crow Falls into a sparsely forested area. The basket lands clumsily in the brush and rests on its side. It will make a fine shelter. There's no telling what evil may lurk outside. You curl up and get to sleep. 202. And an ambush. Chapter 3, though. Hey, how about that? We don't... Do we need these again? I don't know. Noon steamers. You wake to the gentle sound of pattering rainfall on the outside of the basket. Wet, tired, and hungry, you wrestle your way through the brush to the north entrance of Crow Falls. A guard promptly greets you. State your business. I'm here to find passage to Seacrest. She looks you over with little interest. Best be quick about it. All steamers leave by noon, she says, bored. Before you can say anything more, she's moved on to another wheelie traveler. Do you have the black or red bag? No. So 207. Would have been nice if I got that, but wasted most of my time there, I guess. Oh my god. Pull the following 29 chords into six groups numerically. We're putting you over here for now. Also, we did not get a single one of these things. 
Unless I completely missed them, which is a distinct possibility. You can move to a new location anytime or go back and continue from the latest chord revealed in any location if allows. There is a limited number of chords you can reveal depending on which chord you came from. 201, 202, 203, and 204. Once you're out of options or reach your chord limit, discard all location chords and proceed to 237. Do not discard any unrevealed chords from the location decks until you've reached your limit. What's the li oh. oh, I see how it is. Oh, this is a lot. This is like a lot, a lot. We can go to the atrium, the street fair, the vault, the rusty pint, the town square, or crow society. Let's start with Town Square for our first chord. Crow Falls Town Square is bustling with activity. Farmers and traders from all corners of the realm are selling wares and exotic goods. Find and give Gilfie five gold. I don't have five gold though. I would like to shop around. Is that like a quest? Two thirty one. That is a quest that I should have eighty three. Did I have eighty three? I did. I lost that gold. I spent it all. I'm sorry. Okay, so. Now that I know that's an actual quest I need to give, and not like a quest I get, uh, we're going to go to another location. We're going to go to the vault, seems nice. Here at the south end of Town Square, there's a tall building with a board window. A stern man with a hooked nose is seated behind it. Naturally, you show up for a chat. Don't bother me unless you have a vault key. Give him the Volk's vault key. Do I have Volk's vault key? I have his will, uh, so it's not something, I must have missed that part. Let's go to the street fair. You there, Cracker Jack, can you defeat the Najal of the river? See if you have what it takes, one shot, one gold. If you succeed, you'll be rewarded my world famous salty nuts. Smell them, take it with you, ready? He wiped the spit from your cheek. His sales pitch came a little too close. Behind him are shabby wooden targets hanging from ropes. If you'd like to go pay one go I don't have a gold to pay, so for a fourth one, let's go to the atrium. Rolf. Inside the atrium you marvel over exotic plants from distant lands. A bald tattooed man with a shovel is planting some small trees. He gives you a quick light wave. Tree leaf fighter sapling or silver cat mushroom. I have neither, so I can't do that. Five, let's go to the crow society. I guess you pause at a door that catches your eye. Black, red, and blue birds are carved into it with a small crescent pan in the middle. The panel slides open. Hand me the three brooches. Give brooches. If all three are required, I don't even have a single brooch. I am not doing too well in this game. So we have to. T uh, our 6 1 will be the Rusty Pint. You enter the Rusty Pint. The place looks empty. Hello, still serving breakfast, you ask? A small man pops up from behind the bar. I'm running low on ingredients. Those pirates ate everything I have. I'm closing up till tomorrow. That is, unless you have something we can cook, I haven't eaten myself. I might have something here. You start fumbling through your bag. Um, I have nothing. I could do nothing in this place. 237, let's go. Y'all just stay over here, I guess. Window shopping. As you head toward the harbor, you notice an item in the window in the shop window. 
Sitting in front and center on display shelf is an impressive looking slingshot. Maybe you could squeeze in one more stop. I need that slingshot. I need it. Give me. Uh, although you're running short of time, you want to stop by the local train post. Here you can purchase and sell goods. Pull course 285 and 287. Through 287. If you own the members only bucket, you're able to get three gold off each item purchase. Do I have the members only buckler? I don't. Do I have anything? I have a mis I can't do that. Is the fishing rod worth anything? No. Enchanted boater bag? Nothing. How am I going through absolutely nothing? <sighs> okay, 239. Despite a solid effort, you arrive at the harbor a moment too late. The last steamboat has left. Wait, you yell, but it's no use. The boat's engine is loud and there's no way they can hear you. You need to find a way onto the boat. Beside you is a rowboat too wide for one person to row. A few paces away is the harbor's main line of defense. A row of catapults set to strike invaders by water. The soldier assigned to this job is asleep on the job. Get in the catapult, only one player, so I have to do that. <laughs> Excellent decision, you think, as you sit in the basket tethered to a boulder. The catapult leather is next to the snoothing crow's fall soldier. You're going to need a powerful shot to activate it. Okay, let's try this. Also, these go away because... Ten? This thing's worth ten? Uh, anyway... So, we have accuracy three, two sets. Uh, I can use this or that. Let's do that one, I guess. I mean, that's a hit. So we're going to roll our dice. That's a double hit. So we have succeeded on this. However, with three, mo two more sets, we can try to get this. We have two sets to pull that off. We're going to try. It'll give us a marksman token. I mean, we're a third of the way there. We're not going to be able to do it this set. It doesn't matter. So let's do our final set. Oh wait, no, accuracy three sets two. We got it, it's fine. So it was a hit. I guess I never miss, huh? If luck you don't deserve, your shot knocks the lever down, catapulting you into the air. Air surfing with absolute precision, you land softly in the balancing, balancing on the steamboat's port side. It defies reason or plausibility, but you're alive, uninjured, and aboard the steamboat. Well done. Meet. I don't want to meet the captain. I'm a goddamn stowaway. You approach the riverboat captain. Miss, I am looking for a ride to Seacrest. I'm a no boot for company on the river today. You're taking me, you say. Then wish you hadn't. Oh, really? Her ferret snarls poised to attack. Show note or steamboat ticket if acquired. I have not got any. I guess I have. I don't want to f shoot at her ferret. I guess I have to. Madeline is surprised to see you draw your weapon. However, she doesn't seem overly concerned. Accuracy three. One set. One hit. 
Oh Lord, let's do that. That's a hit. I don't need this one anyway. So let's see if I can get the thing. Nope, but I don't. I don't miss. So two fifty. You snap off a loose warning shot. The ferret catches the pebble in its teeth and drops it in Madeline's open palms. To your surprise, Madeline begins to laugh. You got spunk. I like that. Well, you're here, and I could use a hand with a few things. I'll let you tag along, but if I catch you doing anything fishy, I'll toss you overboard. Place this moment in your inventory. Okay, 252. This is a great spot to fish, Madeline suggests. You can fish if you have a fishing pole. Madeline offers you one whistle cricket and one stink worm. Take your bait, one and one. Pull the three fishing cords, fish, then... So I have... I have a black and a white. Put the black here, the yellow here. Let's see how I do. Accuracy three, one set. Just need one hit. Terrible. It's a hit though. This gave me another one. It's technically, I don't know if it'll matter, but that gave me two hits. A worthy catch indeed. Consuming the Whistler Trout will bring you dexterity. All players can now use the gold wild shot dice. Remember during a face off, only one wild shot may be rolled between two players. If caught, place in your inventory. Yay. And let's do this one. Same thing. Accuracy three, one set. Both of those are good, but we, I like that one a bit better. It gives me slightly better odds. Unless I whiffed. So that's a miss too. So um Do I have salty nuts or trail mix? I don't. So I guess I'll do some chores. I am basically a stowaway. Madeline shows you the boiler room and hands you a shovel. Feed this with coal. Give it a good six, seven shovelfuls weight, then watch the pressure gauge. You want the needle in the yellow and closer to the green, not in the red. The pressure release valve is busted. If it climbs too high, it will explode. Roll a set of four shot dies. Fill the gauge meter squares below with marker cubes that you match in numerical order. You may finesse in the shot normally. No feats, effects, or wild shot dies may be used. All numerically matching rolls at the end of your set must be used. No squares can be skipped. If you're unable to match any squares in any order, fill all four squares. Keep this card if your references for later. You want this in the yellow and closer to the green. So we really only want the one, it looks like. Okay, so we're going to roll four. I'm going to do that, and I'm going to save these three. So hope... Can I say this then? At the end of your set must be used. Okay. So we'll do these and hopefully re-roll this so it's only a one. So no, we get the tail, but we're done. 257. After 30 minutes of shoveling and monitoring the pressure gates of death, you hear a loud bang from outside. You brace yourself, half expecting the boiler to explode. Thankfully, it doesn't. Then comes another loud crash. The bolt jolts to one side, smacking you into the wall. 
You rush up to the back. Not good. Reveal one of the three 258s. Do this one. A giant salmon. Impaired. If a half white remains at the end of the completed set, remove one bill's eye favicle. Only one rules bullseye may remove per set. Okay. Three accuracy, two set. Let's go. I got that. I got a bullseye. Let's just hold there. Got two. Let's do it again. Okay, we'll save one. Uh, that's bad. Don't remove a hit, please. Fine. Get one out. That's fine. Let's hope that's our last interruption. The river can churn up all sorts of surprises. Madeline says, I get nervous when the boat gets banged around. Besides blowing up, I've had the boat torches knocked off in the past. Without them, the chances of late night attacks increase dramatically. We should consider ourselves lucky. The sky begins to blaze the pastel orange as the sun sets. You aren't feeling lucky, not tonight. Place this moment in your inventory. And then sleep in the guest bunk 261. Your accommodations aren't bad for a volatile steamboat on the fritz. There's a cozy bed attached to the wall for you to curl up in. You slide into some warm, albeit dusty, blankets. Sadly, it's just not meant to be. The force of a sudden impact flings you out of bed and mashes you against the opposite wall. You're sensing a pattern here. Reveal 262 through 270. River Squid Instructions. Hildegard can shoot at either the right or left tentacle. If either tentacle is defeated, discord it. The right tentacles, left tentacles, and River Najal have separate attacks treated as separate enemies. The steamboat hit meter functions the same way as the Hildegard meter. Please note, block items, if required, may be used on the steamboat. Layout course 265 as pictured. Please review the additional instructions on the pressure gauge and cannons. If you have the candle, the torch to save moment, Hildegard has honed in her first set. I do have the torch to save. Oh, Lord. So this goes here. This goes here. This goes here. 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 Okay. Pressure gauge. Place a marker cube on the square on 269 that coincides with the gauge meter results on core 256. That would be here. Um, this is your pressure gauge level, starting point. During the face-off, Hildegard and the can operator, C-Core 264, uh, may spin any bullseye combination during a set to move the level one square up or down. If the right tentacle, left tentacle, or Reverend Ajal damage the steam point by filling the hit square, move the pressure gauge level up a square. Any status effects applicable occur until the level changes. The face-off ends when either the river and the shell of the steamboat is defeated. When either occurs, reveal the appropriate core before. Okay, cannon guard. When Heldegard shoots from the deck, Mandolin or Helivik is operating the ship cannon. In a one-player game, you will act as Hildegard and the cannon operator both. The operator will roll their loading set, hit accuracy of 4. Then use whatever they can to fill the cannon meter numerically only. When the cannon meter is filled, they may immediately roll a firing set at the River Najal. This is performed the same as a regular set. The hit accuracy again is 4. Firing sets inflict Mega Bullseye on the River Najal. Only Mega Bullseyes can wound the River Najal. The can operator cannot fire at the tentacles. Only Hildegard defeats both tentacles. She can help the can operator by rolling her sets toward the cannon meter. Please note no wild shot is rolled during a loading set, only on a firing set. Positive effects is only in play, do not carry over to a firing set. Feats cannot be used on the River Najal, only left and right tentacles. I don't know what the hell is going on here.
anyway, um, so we have four. And let's see. We're going for the left, which is just the half circle. So she got none. Fantastic. We got one. Okay, we got a hit at least. So that's there. Then it's the cannoner's gob, I guess. So they're going to roll four. We can't, we can hold that. Maybe we'll get lucky. Can we finesse this? I assume we can. These are all terrible. A. Okay, so we got two cubes there. Now it's these things turn hit accuracy two. Did I forget to roll? I forgot to roll a dice for her. Didn't matter. So that's two. I probably could have saved a damage. Whatever, we'll do it live. Nothing. You roll three. Actually, no, I'm going to block one. I know I had enough because I did one damage. I had four, so yeah, block one. So this does three. It'll save this one. This will take off a block. Nope. And you have two. It actually hit. And then you get this. Now, just one damage on the steamboat. My turn. Oh, we got a hit, so we go up on the thing, right? <sighs> there is too much here. So now it's Hildegard's turn. She has accuracy four. I think she's going to do a thingy to get us an extra cube because we are doing not that good here. Again, holding off the left. Oh my god, this was terrible. That's a hit at least. It's one. Can I get another one, please? No. What dice do I want to use? I think the gold one is better. Probably just objectively better. So that's two bullseyes. This thing is dead. Roar. Now we roll this thing up. Uh, that's a loaded for fire. What happens then? When the cannons fill, they may immediately roll a firing set at the river. This is performed the same way as a regular set. Hit accuracy four. Firing sets inflict mega bullseyes on the river Najal. Only mega. Oh, I see how it is. That, that. That's one hit. And we're not going to be able to do that. You can do a wild shot on the loading thing, so let's do that. Well, the cannon, I mean. What does that symbol mean? Change one shot dice to the result of your choice. 
None of that would help. So we just get one thing. And now it's the monsters. I forgot to do the defense die again. I could still do it with that. Can I? I don't think I can do block dies for the... I think it's only for Hildegard. I think. I don't know. Rules are vague. Since I forgot, we're just going to go with it. Oof. It can potentially use that, so it's going to hold on to that. So that's another damage. We are... I am now tame. No wild shot. And then this thing has accuracy too. No damage, which is good. My turn is four. Oh, well, again, I'm doing it this one, that. All terrible. Wow, these dice rolls are something. That doesn't even work. And again, I don't think, I know these are a bullseye, but I don't think I can use, oh, you can only use things for the bullseye, for, well, I can use this for a bullseye then, a defense then. Whoops, these are wrong. Okay, so now it's the big buy, it's time. Now first we're loading, at least we're trying to. Um. That'll fill, that'll fill. That'll fill. Can we get a full shot of? No. Three. It breaks through the block, which is annoying. At least it doesn't do, that one doesn't deal any extra damage. Accuracy 2. Doesn't matter which one it saves. No more damage. Uh, our turn. Accuracy 4. She's going for that one. Absolutely worthless. Everything. Worthless. This could potentially give me a bullseye at least. And it did. And then this. That that still doesn't do anything. I got there. And nothing I can use for defense. Great. Okay, we can get another shot off. That's one bullseye. That's one and a half bullseyes. That's one and a half bullseyes. Hey, I can do that to make two bullseyes. Perfect. Well, it's almost dead at least, but we kind of or two. Their thing gets three attacks. Oof. Do that and so hold on to that. Okay, that's one damage. And then this one attacks. Nothing. Another hit. Okay, we're taking... Oh, we also need to get this thing down because I think we're going to blow up if we don't. So, yeah, again... Hold on to that one. Terrible. That was not a roll. That I get the bullseyes when I don't have the thing, and I don't get anything from that. 
Perfect. Loading shot. Um, I guess that one. Okay. No, we get two on this. Next, it's this guy's turn. It rolls three. This could potentially use, so it saves that. That's just a blank, so that one's a worthless now. Ha ha. Okay, this one rolls two. That's fine. Taking more damage. Hildegrid's turn. I guess I'll save one. Hey, I have a bullseye. Wild shot. I'm gonna do the bullseye to this thing. I had tame. Did not, I don't think I did a wild shot that mattered. So we're good. Anyway, you get this. Hold on to that one, I guess. Hold on to that one, I guess. Nothing. Monster's turn. We could we could easily die here. Yep. We're blown up, which means we go to lose 272. A massive tentacle crashes down the steamboat, splitting it in two. Pipes burst as the boiler erupts. The ship explodes and its many broken pieces sink into the river, lost forever. Ending 15, or pay two to hold on to something. I could, but like this video is dragging on as it is, so I think we're just going to call it there. If you like it, again, the Kickstarter for the next one, Ringataki, is live right now. And until next time, take care.